Hello, this is MichaelJ11, and here's my contraption to harness some free energy off of hot, we uh, hot water heater. So, the flue gas coming out of the hot water heater is a gas hot water heater, um, but it gets pretty hot, um, about 600 degrees um, inside when I stick a thermocouple in there, but the stack only on the outside only gets to about 150 um, degrees Fahrenheit, so you can, you can hold it when it's running, but um, it's pretty hot. Um, so basically, I just take in a um, my thermoelectric cooler and Peltier cooler and stuck that on there. And this is probably about a 60 watt cooler. I'm not not really sure, but um, so basically, I uh, screwed. I took this aluminum sheet, fairly thick stuff, um, and screwed that onto the back of the aluminum, and so that has a good thermal contact there. And then I um, just kind of wrapped some wire around the um, flue and that kind of holds the copper on there so that I get a good nice contact around there because the steel doesn't conduct very well so I need a large area to kind of conduct the heat towards the um, thermoelectric cooler and then I've got a nice little fan on here um, which will run and all this stuff runs off of the um, thermoelectric cooler actually so I've got actually a number of there's four or four um, thermocouples that go to the readout there so I'll take some measurements and then the power goes through the meters so I've got current and voltage and then um, it goes to the, the little jewel thief which runs these LEDs and also the cooling fan and then here's actually a second thermoelectric cooler that I was experimenting with another idea um, another concept which this one doesn't work as well um, mainly because so basically this heat sink here is from a laptop, laptop computer um, and it works okay, but because I actually realized that, um, well, originally I just kind of stuck that in there to see if it would work, and the solder actually started melting, so I decided that probably wasn't going to work, so I resoldered it with higher temperature solder, and now it seems to hold up to, because I used 600 degree solder, so it holds up now, um, but I've got some wire wrapped around here just for extra measure to make sure it doesn't fall off inside the hot water heater, which it almost did. Um, but so there's my little thermoelectric cooler there, um, sandwiched there. But because this actually originally um, had water in it until it boiled away, so it's basically just a piece of tubing with water in it. So I don't know why they would do that, but not make it solid copper. That's what I originally thought it was. I thought it was solid copper, but it had water in it. So, <laughs> so it's actually a heat pipe. But um, so I have that on there, and when I, when the water came out, it's no longer it doesn't work as well anymore so it doesn't conduct the heat enough to really produce very much power um, so this one really produces a lot more but still not a lot so and then I also designed this heat sink so that the air that goes up on up through the flue there through this funnel um, would kind of pull through here but it, it doesn't work that well but so let's fire up the hot water heater and I'll show you it working so <laughs> Turn the gas on a little bit there. So it just fired up. And now we just gotta wait for it to heat up. So I'll be back in a second here. So I'll just check the temperatures. So this is the temperature inside the flue right here, this this one there. But I've got four. One right here on the stack, one here on the um, aluminum, one here on the cold side of the aluminum, and then one inside and so yeah that's all of them so it's already up to 450 degrees Fahrenheit so yeah and we've actually got some current there starting to flow a little bit of voltage so I'll probably and in case you guys don't know this is what a hot water heater looks like underneath gas you can see in the middle there maybe there's actually that's the pipe that goes up through the bottom of the hot water heater and then we've got a nice big um, burner down there and there's the air intake which you could actually adjust and then we've got our um, shut off so the gas water heaters are pretty nice because well natural gas here in Pennsylvania is pretty cheap as well as um, it's fairly efficient I think um, but, oh it started up so we've got our fan running up here and our LEDs are all on so now these, these little jewel thieves here, 
this one, which just turned on, this one, this one, and that one. Those all run off of this one. And then these all run off of this one Jewel Thief here, which run off of this cooler as well as the fan. So all that stuff runs off that one, which is, there's our voltage and current right now. And our inside the flue there, we're up at 550 degrees. And switch here on this thermocouple here that's just on the pipe. 180, and let's see, this one is the cold side of the heat sink. So right here, this one, that is 78 degrees. And then the, right here, that thermocouple is 124, 125. So, inside the flue, whoop, I've got to lose connection now. There we go, so that, that's inside the it's the gas coming up through there, and they're lighting up pretty nice now. We're up to one volt now, and 43 milliamps. Nice little bit of air coming across there. Switch back over to the... Um, so we're up to 130 degrees on the um, hot side there now. So, but yeah, it's working pretty good. I was really surprised how much power I could actually get out of. There's my little tiny, that's my little tiny jewel thief there. It's running away. Just an SMD LED. And my, this one's not working. That one's kind of picky. But, yeah, they're all working. <clears throat> voltage now and the fan's starting to spin more. So now we're up to 140 degrees on the hot side and on the cold side we are up to 80 degrees inside the flue and that is on the outside so almost 200 degrees. I mean it's pretty hot you can still touch it but it's it's not burning hot but so it's, all, it's actually closer to boiling than I thought I didn't think it was that hot. Yeah, so you could actually burn yourself, probably if the, well, if you hold on to it long enough, you'd definitely burn yourself. Not advised. 50 milliamps. Now the short out current is actually pretty good on these. Um, I got, I've got it up to around, let me hear, I'll short it out and show you guys what it, It's over the 200 milliamp scale. Put on 2,000 milliamps. So 0.3 amps. So so yeah. Yeah, that fan actually works a lot better than I ever thought it would. There's actually a nice bit of air flow over it. So it's keeping it nice and cool. Let's check the temperature of that. So it's keeping it at 83 degrees. It's nice and warm. Yeah, this one works, I suppose. I, I may rebuild it, I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty pretty hot. So, but yeah, I might replace the um, copper pipe there with a larger piece of copper, and then um, just shut off, um, and then maybe clamp some aluminum heat sinks or something on there. It might be better. I don't know. So I'll experiment with that. But but yeah, this actually works surprisingly well. I didn't think it would work that well, but. So yeah, and it'll run for a little while. It's pretty bright now, 66 milliamps, 1.5 volts. So it's a normal AA battery. Just turn the light off, see how bright it is. Oh, it's actually pretty good. It's actually very good. I'm surprised. So it's not very, my Sterling engine pumps out more power than that, but it's still not bad at all. 
So we're dropping voltage a little bit there. I believe that that's on the... But yeah, it really works surprisingly well. So I guess that's about, oh, I don't know. I don't have a calculator here. It's probably about 0.1 something watts, 0.2 watts maybe. So not a lot of power, but I mean, it's kind of neat just to get some power off of the um, the gas that's all the energy that's getting wasted up the flue, which just in case you guys are wondering, this is actually a 75 gallon water heater, so fairly large. Um, but I was actually just looking at the manual, and there is actually a baffle inside the flue, in inside the internal flue, um, to make it more efficient to kind of um, get all of the flue gas um, to touch the sides to try to cool it off as much as possible to make it more efficient. But um, as you can see, there's kind of a funnel where we lo were looking before under the burner, so probably the flames hit that mostly, and that's probably where most of the heat comes from or where it heats the water at most, and then the gas that goes up transfers a little bit more heat to the water. Um, but yeah, and then there's actually a sacrificial anode um, right here, which is probably zinc or uh, magnesium or something like that. We actually tried to um, replace that, but since it was so stuck in there because it's rusted because this is a 25 or so year old hot water heater and it was never replaced, you're supposed to replace them every 10 years or something like that. But, and actually the hot water tank, it's supposed to be glass lined. I'm not really sure how they would do that, but that's what it's supposed to be. But it still has an anode, I guess, if it cracks or I guess around the, um, the inlet, inlets and outlets, you can't really, um, can't really seal it with, or put coat everywhere with glass. So, um, it would still rust away. So you still have to have a sacrificial anode, but, um, yeah, so. That's about it for my little project. Hope you guys enjoyed. Thanks for watching.